Why can't I just start a video like a normal human being? Hi friends. You may have noticed that I'm already wearing makeup and that is because we are doing a different type of video today. This year in general, I want to delve more into makeup commentary. So I was already planning on doing this video. However, for the first time ever in my YouTube career, if you can call it that, when you don't make any money doing it. I was tagged. I kind of always thought that being tagged in a tag on YouTube was kind of a myth, a legend. I was tagged by Makeup by Anki here on YouTube. I'll leave her channel in the description box down below. Anki very kindly tagged me just out of the blue in the My Makeup Year 2020 tag. The tag was originally started by Angelica Liramars or Liramars. Basically, it's just 10 questions about your thoughts on makeup releases of 2020, on makeup you've tried in 2020. I've never done a YouTube tag before, partly because I've never been tagged in one before. And of course, you know, when a YouTuber says, I tag anyone who wants to do it, you're like, I should probably just do them more often regardless because these tags are super cute and I think they're really good content. And it's a good way to dip my toe into the commentary pool. So thank you so much Anki for tagging me in this. I was very flattered. I encourage you all to go check out their channel. Anyway, this intro is already too long and it is already the afternoon. So if that sounds like fun to you, then please keep on watching and let's get started. All right, so there's 10 questions. I will leave them in the description box below for anyone who wants to participate in this tag. Question number one, brands I fell in love with this year. That is a good question. Being a creator that doesn't get a lot of PR, it is kind of difficult for me to try out a wide variety of brands. So if I find something I like, I usually stick with it. I don't tend to branch out all that much. Be that as it may, I did try probably more makeup than I ever have in 2020. Was it because of all the stress buying? Maybe. Was it also because it was the year I filmed the most in my entire time on YouTube? Also probably. But you know what also happened last year was a huge social uprising. And because of that, I was introduced and exposed to a lot more black owned businesses. Super happy to have been introduced to some incredible brands, one of which being Glam Goth Beauty. Glam Goth Beauty specializes in the most insane loose glitters you've ever seen in your life. How many do I already have? Like it's kind of ridiculous. In one year alone, I've already purchased six of them. They make a really good liquid lip formula. I have the shade Blood Rose and the newest ones that she just launched may or may not be arriving at my house sometime soon. They also make the most adorable makeup accessories in the cutest color ranges. I mean, how can you not love this adorable little mirror? It's perfect. Everything Glam Goth does is so perfectly aesthetically pleasing to me and they're just doing great stuff. Another black owned brand I explored this year was Makeup Addiction Cosmetics. Specifically got my hands on the Meadow palette, which I had been coveting already. But the brand I think I fell in love with the most this year is Shroud Cosmetics. They've just had a banner year. Most of the other YouTubers who have done this tag that I've watched watched have also mentioned Shroud quite a bit, which I think is a testament to just how much they blew up last year. I don't think anyone expected the It's Freaking Bats palette to explode on the scene quite like it did, but it certainly put them on the map. Usually I can only appreciate indie brands from afar because living in Canada, shipping and duties and taxes can sometimes double the price of an eyeshadow palette. That has actually happened to me this week. Earlier on in the year, I finally bit the bullet and and bought both the Arcana palette and the Creepy Cube palette, and it felt like my eyes were opened. I had been coveting the Arcana palette for months, <laughs> couldn't have made a better decision because it became my favorite palette of 2020, which I talk about in my favorites video. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link it up here. I just can't imagine an indie brand that I love more than Shroud right now at this point. There is a long, long list of indie brands that I have yet to try that I hope to try in the future, but for now, Shroud kind of reigns supreme for me. Me. Question number two, brands I broke up with this year. Well, <laughs> Now, I don't wanna to get too in the weeds of this question because I've already dedicated an entire video to brands I don't want to support anymore. I will link it up here. And I talk more in depth about brands that I really just don't feel like giving my money to anymore. But the ones that I've broken up with specifically in the year of 2020 would have to be Morphe and Anastasia Beverly Hills. Morphe because I kind of just got sick and tired of them being so blatantly dishonest. I'm not gonna continue 
purchasing products from a brand that I can't trust to tell me the correct ingredients in an eyeshadow. Also, I don't know. I feel like they're just trying to keep up with the kids at this point, doing Morphe 2, Morphe the sequel, Morphe Too Fast, Too Furious. I, I feel like they're willing to drop an entire consumer base like a hot potato for TikTokers. And truthfully, their price point isn't even really that low, all things considered. Anastasia Beverly Hills really broke my heart last year. I was a huge fan of the brand and their products. I thought they were doing some really creative, inventive things with eyeshadow palettes. I've always loved them ever since I started getting into makeup. So that one was a hard one to come to terms with, but I can't really just ignore the problematic behavior of Norvina specifically. And even though there's that confusing thing that Norvina is actually supposed to be a completely separate brand, even though it's not really, she's still the face of ABH now. And even though she's become the face of like one of the biggest makeup brands in the world, she can't seem to just act like an adult. And if you can't do the bare minimum by taking accountability, then like, I don't know. I don't want to sit here and stan your products, but I digress. I have a whole video on it. Go check it out. Question number three, products I was happy I didn't buy goes to ColourPop's website. No, I'm kidding. Um, gosh, I mean, there is so much makeup I don't buy. I have to be very choosy with the makeup that I do end up purchasing just because I don't have unlimited amounts of money. Well, the most recent one that I felt good about not buying was anything from the Melt Beetlejuice collection. I talk about this more in my duping out the Hip Dot My Chemical Romance palette video, which I will leave up here. I'm running out of cards, but I was very close to buying the Waiting Room palette several times. Even though it was sold out and out of stock, everywhere. Somehow my Sephora, the one that's closest to me, happened to have three of them still. And every time I went in there, I stood in front of that melt display, staring at the palette and really contemplating it. I love melt products. I'm obsessed with them. I think they're such a cool, brand. However, this collection particularly seemed a little bit uninspired. On first glance, I thought the palettes were absolutely beautiful. If I had unlimited amounts of money, I would have bought them both up in a heartbeat. But because I took the time to really think about it and watch reviews on it, I kept kind of seeing the same response to the palettes. Most people were saying that some of the shadows were a bit repetitive. I think Pomberry specifically was saying something about about how she was disappointed in the purple and green palette. I can't remember what it's called right now, but there were three different purple shades that she said were just so similar that they seemed really redundant. And I felt it was really out of character for Mel to pull a stunt like that because usually all of their products are so well thought out and so beautifully curated that it just seemed very unlike them. After all that, I'm ultimately fairly glad that I didn't waste my money. Oh yeah. And then there was also the Pat McGrath holiday palette palette that came out, you know, the big fat one. And for some reason it was priced lower than any of the Mothership palettes. It being a holiday release, I immediately was skeptical. Holiday releases are notorious for being lower quality than regular releases, pretty much across the board with every brand. But I saw it and it's Pat McGrath and I've never even touched or swatched anything from Pat. And that big palette was tempting. But then I saw Smokey Glow's review of it and she seemed pretty disappointed. Basically all of her suspicions were true. The quality was definitely subpar compared to other palettes of Pat's that she has tried. So I'm really glad I didn't waste my money on that. Honestly, I could go on on this topic because there's a lot of makeup that I almost very very nearly by, but don't. That happens a lot with me. This could be an entire video. Actually, if you want that, leave a comment down below because I could probably fill out 20 minutes just on that topic alone. Question number four, makeup products I was happy I bought. Oh man, um, this is gonna be tough because most of the things that I've bought this year, I was happy I bought. Off the top of my head, both the Raw Beauty Christie collaborations, the Pure X Raw Beauty Christie collection, as well as the ColourPop and Raw Beauty Christie collection. I think Christie had been preparing for this pretty much her entire career. So 
when she finally got the opportunity to execute it, boy howdy, she just went off like a shot and nailed it to the wall. I mean, tell me that this isn't the most beautiful palette ColourPop released last year. So much thought, so much love, so much attention, so much care. I can say the exact same thing about the double-sided pressed pigment palette. I mean, who thinks of this stuff? There's nothing in my collection like this. With both of these, she came out with something that everyone was asking for. And at the same time, just completely stayed true to who she is as a creator and did it twice in one year. 2020 was the year I finally got to purchase from Boldface and they've quickly become some of my favorite lashes. In retrospect, I should have put them in with the brands I fell in love with in 2020 as well. I hadn't been able to try them until 2020 because when I actually found them and wanted to buy from them a couple years ago, they weren't shipping to Canada yet. They were absolutely worth the wait. I think they're so spectacular. Some of the most gorgeous styles of lashes I've ever seen and I wear them constantly. I keep thinking I'm forgetting things as well and I probably am, but like there's only so much you can talk about before people start to tune out. All right, halfway through folks, question number five. Overhyped makeup releases of 2020. This is an interesting question because when you say overhyped, does it mean necessarily makeup that wasn't worth the hype? Or does that also include makeup that was okay or good, but also was disproportionately hyped? To me, I think something can be overhyped and still be decent quality. I don't think it necessarily has to be disappointing to be overhyped, if that makes any sense. So by that definition, I believe that the most overhyped makeup release of 2020 without a singular doubt in my mind was the Conspiracy Collection. Was that 2020? Hold on, I need to check now. It was 2019. Damn it. Guys, I don't know. My grip on time progression right now is tenuous. It is holding on by a thread. Can you blame me? 2020 has been the longest three years of my life. Well, then I have to change my answer because if it was launched in 2020, literally an entire documentary series was made solely to promote this collaboration. You can't get much more overhyped than that. So for 2020, the most overhyped makeup launch, I don't know, it's hard to say. Now, I might be biased because this is one of the the only launches of 2020 that I paid attention to in great detail, but I do feel that the ColourPop Hocus Pocus collection was unfortunately a little bit overhyped. When they announced that collection, I feel like the internet kind of exploded. For good reason, it is a beloved franchise, and honestly, what millennial wouldn't want an eyeshadow palette inspired by the Sanderson sisters? The idea was impeccable. I was obsessed from the word go. All of the product photography, the packaging, the artwork was just so spot on that it really got all of our hopes up. And it must've been overhyped because that launch broke the ColourPop website so hard that they had to cancel the launch and do it the next day. That's pretty wild. And I would say it's overhyped not because it was bad. I actually like this palette. I like the color story. Some of the textures are not my favorite and I don't think it is ColourPop's best work. I would define this launch as overhyped because it wasn't the best collection ColourPop's ever done. I don't know if that definition of overhyped is controversial, but let me know if you agree. I mean, in all honesty, a lot of launches in 2020 were met with not as much fanfare as other years. I feel like a lot of makeup consumers were kind of disillusioned. And I feel like there's a lot more energy going towards calling out brands for their foolishness. So I feel like that overhyped energy just wasn't really there much last year. That could be because I'm just projecting my own feelings, but let me know if you agree. And honestly, I'm I'm here for that energy. I think more of that is necessary in a world of consumerism. Question number six, makeup releases that were worth the hype in 2020. Now, I think I have to reiterate what other people have said in this tag and just go with the three launches that I was so happy I participated in and set alarms for and refreshed websites for. And I think it has to go to the Shroud X Butte Bean It's Frickin' Bats palette, the Pure X Robbie D. Christie Double Sided Pressed Pigment palette, and the ColourPop X Robbie D. Christie At Forest Sight palette. I think I just really lucked out with the launches that I wanted to be a part of last year, because without a doubt, these are some of the most successful launches in 2020. Also, some of the most hyped launches in 2020. However, unlike the Hocus Pocus collection, these three palettes absolutely delivered. As I'm filming this, I just finished doing a two looks, one palette with this guy. It should have gone up last week and I don't think I have any more cards to put up here, but go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Question number seven, best new indie brand of 2020. This one is tough for me to answer because again, I don't get sent 
PR and therefore don't get a lot of really brand new indie brands on my radar. By the time I get around to trying an indie brand, they are usually a bit more well established. I guess the boring answer is I didn't try any indie brands last year that also started last year. Question number eight, worst release of 2020. Ooh, that's a toughie. Especially at the end of last year, I started watching a lot more makeup commentary, which led to watching a lot more anti hauls. And boy, there were some, there were some doozies. Let's go to the Sephora app because I'm pretty sure that's where you're going to find them. KVD Vegan Beauty really had a doozy of a year last year. Probably one of the most hideous eyeshadow palettes I've seen in quite a while was the Vegan Love eyeshadow palette. Not a hot take, definitely not, but there's a reason it is marked down from $57 to $28 right now. Bad makeup gets released all the time. This, is, this could be an entire video. Oh God, right. I mean, to come back to Morphe, I think one of the most hideous palettes that they've ever released is the Morphe and Nikita Artistry palette. I don't even know what happened there. Some sort of collective brain aneurysm. Something about the Urban Decay Stoned Vibes eyeshadow palette really sets my teeth on edge. Ooh, right. Where is that? <laughs> Oh my God, this one almost seems like a troll. The Becca Cosmetics Zero No Pigment Foundation. Does it even need to be talked about? Because it's listed as a foundation. Sephora still has that little shade finder tab underneath. <laughs> oh God. Oh, that tickles me. <laughs> Question number nine, one thing I don't want to see in 2021. Brands collaborating with problematic influencers. That one was at the forefront of my brain, but let's keep going. Um, I mean, something I wish wouldn't happen in 2021, but will probably inevitably happen is another neutral pink eyeshadow palette from Too Faced. I bet you any money without fail, that is what the holiday release of 2021 is gonna look like. What else? I don't know, brands doing the absolute bare minimum minimum when it comes to shade ranges. If you're gonna launch a complexion product, you have to launch it for everyone. I'm looking at you, Hourglass. Ooh, most of all, I would love to see this whole clean beauty fallacy just disappear. Folks, I hate to tell you this, but everything is chemicals. And I would rather preservatives be in my makeup than mold and bacteria. If I can find the video that I just watched that reaffirmed all of my feelings about clean beauty, I will leave it in the description box down below. I just really dislike fear mongering about things that people don't understand. Jessica Alba is not a scientist. Why are we putting her word above actual scientists? And finally, question number 10. One thing I do want to see in 2021. Does it have to be makeup related? <laughs> You know, generally I would just like to see theater again in 2021, that would be great. I would love to have my career back. Gosh, being unemployed for a full calendar year, it just, it takes a toll on you. Okay, but in seriousness, what do I wanna see in 2021 as far as makeup goes? Here's the thing, when it comes to indie makeup, I already think that there's some really cool brands out there that are doing some really imaginative shit. The only thing that's really prohibiting me from trying all these really amazing brands is astronomical shipping prices. Why can't we just make it a little easier to ship across the border? It is so disheartening to fall in love with a new brand, something you've just discovered, pile up your cart full of goodies, go to checkout, and seeing that the only shipping option is one that would double the price of your order. Like, I understand that when you're a smaller brand and you're just starting out, everything is gonna be a little bit more expensive, and that includes shipping. I'm just lamenting because it means I miss out on so much good makeup. Every now and then I bite the bullet. I just grit my teeth and close my eyes and hit purchase. And for the most part, it usually pays off and I'm happy I have the product and I don't have any regrets. But as a makeup YouTuber, it would just be so nice to be able to freely explore. I have a list a mile long and I think there will be a video in the future here where I will get into that more. But I just wish there was a way that they could just cut us a break up here in Canada. Our dollar is already so weak. Like, why do you you have to just hit us where it hurts. I guess to add to that, something I would love to see more in 2021 is more indie brands in Sephora. I'm still kicking myself for not buying up more Lunar Beauty when I had the opportunity to. At one point, I could have just walked in and bought the Strawberry Dreams eyeshadow palette, and now it is just unfeasible. Oh, so many regrets. Here's my suggestion. Kick out Morphe altogether. We don't need that kind of negativity in our life, and just fill the void with indie brands. Let them have the opportunity to sell in places other than the US. I 
think it would just be so brilliant for Sephora to branch out and give that kind of opportunity. I'm just tired of going into Sephora and being consistently underwhelmed at my options. And the makeup industry is shifting. I don't think luxury brands interest us as much as it used to. I think we've moved past the need for luxury makeup retailers because we've seen it all. It's uninteresting. And I think the interest is now shifting towards smaller companies and indie makeup brands purely because we now have the ability with the internet and social media to be introduced to those brands. I don't know. I just think it'd be really cool for an international makeup retailer to take up the mantle and give these brands the exposure they deserve on a more global scale. All right, I've talked enough. I'm tired. Hopefully this video won't be too long. That being said, I hope it was at least somewhat entertaining. Again, I want to say a huge thank you to Anki for tagging me. Please go check out their channel, give them some love. Please let me know what you thought of this video. If you would like to see more makeup commentary content from this channel, leave a comment below. And with that, let me do some housekeeping. Let me rattle off the spiel to you. Here are the many ways you can help out my channel. You can give this video a huge thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. We are getting so close close to 2K and so close to monetization. So if you can, please share this video with a friend, throw me up in your Instagram stories. Engagement is so crucial to a small creator like me. So if you have the time, please engage with this video. You can follow me on other social media. I will leave those right there. Go check out my Patreon for more behind the scenes type videos, more chatty, get ready with me style videos, more of my personal life. A couple of makeup fundamental tutorials are up there. Lots of stuff to go explore. Also, there are a handful of petitions that I've rounded up and dropped in the description box for you to sign. And I almost finished all of my coffee, which means that it is definitely time to go. All right, folks, please stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands, wear a mask, stay home if you can, keep doing your best, and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye.